before uh, I was introduced to past life kind of inadvertently. What happened to me was that I had this man who called early on in my years of practice and said to me, um, he did not ask for a past life regression, he simply said to me, I wonder if you could deprogram an injury that I think I sustained in childhood. That still bothers me and it's getting worse and I'm not sleeping well. And I asked if he'd been to medical doctors about this, oh yes, many x-rays. Um, they consider my case is one where I simply uh, psychologically have built up something that doesn't exist in terms of a medical problem. And I really need your help. So naturally I took this gentleman and um, I asked him where his pain was and he explained that it was in the side, always in the same place under the ribs, lower, lower down on his left side. And so I took him uh, into his childhood, we worked for a while in his childhood, and got nowhere. He uh, simply, I thought maybe he'd fallen on a kitchen knife, for example, uh, at a young age. Nothing. Nothing came out at all. So finally, in frustration, I said to him, I want you to go to the source of your pain. When was the first time that you felt this pain? Now, I need to tell you that this man was very somnambulistic. He went very deep, very quickly into hypnosis. In fact, he was, he was ahead of me. And what had happened is that he had gone into a deeper alpha state, in what we call an upper alpha state, rather than a middle or more shallow alpha state, which is where I typically work with childhood trauma. So, suddenly, he's screaming. And I'm wondering, what's going on here? And he said, I'm being bayoneted. And I said, where are you? Now, being a historian, it didn't take me long to realize when he mentioned the psalm that we were in World War I and that this man was at the first battle of the psalm. It was July 1st, 1916, and I, if I'm not mistaken, there were about 20,000 men killed that day. He was a British sergeant in the 4th Corps. I checked all this out later, incidentally, but at the time I just couldn't believe this was happening to me. And he explained that uh, uh, he was dying in the mud from a bayonet wound. Now, a kind person, a true psychotherapist, would have been trying to help this poor man get through this. But I didn't believe what was happening. So I wanted to know his name, rank, and serial number. I wanted to know if he would turn and look at the patch on his uniform and tell me what division he was in. These kinds of things. As a researcher, I, I look to this first rather than trying to help this poor fellow. And I'm ashamed of this today, but this is what actually happened. So finally I took pity on him after I got an awful lot of information. And we discerned exactly what was happening to him and why, and then I deprogrammed his injury, pulled him out of it, pulled him above it, and um, he became very quiet. <clears throat> so after that, I awakened him, we talked about what had happened, and he said he felt wonderfully refreshed. I was glad because I didn't feel refreshed. I didn't feel I'd done my job, but apparently it was all he, was, all he needed and he went back home, he called me two or three days later, and he said, my wife wants to thank you, I'm now sleeping at night so she too can sleep. And so from that case, I realized that I needed to probably get with the program and find out what's going on here spiritually and so forth. Now, mind you, this did not prevent me from checking with the British War Office and the Imperial Museum in London. <clears throat> and I found out the facts of this case, that there really truly was such a person, and he did exist in this particular division and unit at the time, and he described the battle perfectly. So from that case, I began to start accepting past life clients. A little bit at a time, mind you, I was still doing a lot of traditional work. It wasn't an awfully long time after that, when I had my second case. And I, I mentioned these, this background to you, Alan, because I think it's important for you to understand where I'm coming from as far as how I've arrived at where I am today. A woman came to me with feelings of isolation. She was very disturbed. I thought this was a typical case of, of someone who was depressed. 
she felt none of her friends were around her. She felt lonely. She felt disconnected from society. Okay. So I took her first into her childhood. We talked about childhood friends. There were not many. And apparently they did not relate to the people she was looking for. So then I moved her into a past life. Now once again, I need to tell you that this lady was very somnambulistic. She went very deep, very fast. And she too was getting a little ahead of me. Only the difference between this case and the World War I soldier was that she'd gone even deeper into what we call the theta state. She was in a superconscious state. I asked her to, once again in frustration, when we did not have any results from her past life, where she saw a few friends, but not the people she was looking for, go to the place and time when you last saw your group of friends that you're missing. This was the key. This unlocked the door for me because the word group is a trigger word because we have spiritual groups. Suddenly, she was in the spirit world. I, of course, did not know there was such a thing. Most people who work in past life regression think that there's nothing more than a grayish limbo between lives. And, of course, today I know this is not true. In this woman's case, she began to cry. She was laughing for joy and crying at the same time with her eyes closed pointing to my office wall. There they all are. And I said, where are we? I thought we jumped into another life. I didn't know where we were. Oh, she said, I'm in the spirit world. These are my soulmates. These are my spiritual friends. And I'm thinking, oh my God, why me? I, I mean... You couldn't pick a more inappropriate person than myself for this kind of analysis. I, I was not that metaphysical. I truly wasn't. I did my best as I had done with a man in World War I. And I found out a little bit about this soul group and discovered that she truly was between lives. And I just want to tell you that from these two cases, I began to realize there was much more in the world that I didn't know of and that, in fact, I had been given with this tremendous gift to be given a key to learn the things that I wanted to learn all my life up to that time. Who are we? Why are we here? Who sent us? And where are we going? So, from that case, uh, I worked for years, kind of by myself, Ellen, I did not go to metaphysical conventions. I did not go to hypnosis conventions. People later, my colleagues, told me this was quite, you know, unfair for you to leave us out of your research. And of course, I didn't want them involved with my research. I felt I had to do it alone. I didn't want to be biased by their opinions. I wanted to work on my own cases, and I worked on thousands of cases all through the 70s and 80s. Uh, other works began to come out indicating that there was something more to just past life regression. There was this other area, perhaps. Finally, when I had pretty close to about 7,000 cases and boxes and boxes of notes, I really retired from Los Angeles where my practice had been and moved up to where I am today in Northern California in the Sierra foothills. Began to write my first book which was published in 1994 and I'll show it to you. It was called Journey of Souls. 